The New Horizon relaunch, and even more the debut of The Authority, is where Wildstorm really started to shine, with stronger and more cohesive storytelling and bold risks that delivered some of the most brilliantly written comics you can imagine. Stormwatch went from Avengers wannabe to unique political thriller with a superhero angle. Sound familiar? That's because, without the authority, there most likely wouldn't have been an MCU as we know it. Welcome to the Review Desk, I'm Desmond Kerk, and today we'll look at how one comic influenced the biggest franchise in motion picture history. In the previous video, we looked at who the Authority are. In this one, I'd like to further discuss why the Authority is the single most important series in the modern age of comics. As I stated, the Wildstorm universe features a more cynical and violent type of superhero. As such, many super teams are distrustful of each other. This results in several established teams, such as Stormwatch and the Wildcats, actively seeking to sabotage each other and having outright battles of highly public nature. It was edgy and dark, but unlike the extreme comics from the early 90s, Wildstorm's more mature direction in 1997 added more depth to the cynicism and ambiguous nature of the characters. Comic book readers, especially those reaching adolescence, had grown somewhat weary of Marvel's soap opera treatments and DC's seemingly outdated value as such, the bigger companies started to emulate the tone and look of the Wildstorm universe. Over at DC, titles such as Identity Crisis presented a less optimistic and altruistic look at the publisher's heroes, even Boy Scout Superman. Civil War, the Marvel comic on which the third Captain America film is based, pits numerous heroes against each other in an escalated debate about accountability and the concept of freedom as it touches upon the consequences of their actions. This is because the Authority decided to look at not only the actions of superheroes, but the repercussions of said actions, especially if it concerned heroes with no official government body to oversee them. The Avengers could easily take down a giant robot rampaging down the streets of New York, but what about collateral damage? How does the public opinion of said heroes change if there's much destruction in the wake of their actions, regardless of how many lives were saved? And how would established power structures respond to a team of individuals possibly posing a threat to the status quo? Wildstorm had also started what was known as the Kevlar and Combat Boots look. Characters would discard colorful spandex costumes in exchange for attire that favored functionality over style. This led to, for example, the X-Men adopting more uniform black leather costumes, starting with Grant Morrison's new X-Men. It should also be noted that the artist, Frank Quietly, who was hired for new X-Men, had previously worked on The Authority. But Marvel took it one step further. In the year 2000, the publisher launched an imprint known as Ultimate Marvel. The purpose of this imprint was to reinvent the company's heroes from the main universe, known as 616, for a modern age and making their stories more accessible to newer readers by eschewing the decades-long history most of these characters had racked up. In order to launch this new universe, Marvel brought in several creators who had worked for Wildstorm, most notably writer Mark Miller and artist Brian Hitch, both who had also worked on The Authority. You see where this is going? In an ironic twist, the Ultimate Universe borrows heavily from Wildstorm, a universe that itself borrowed heavily from the main Marvel Universe. Reaction to this more cynical universe was mixed. Fans didn't appreciate seeing Captain America insulting enemy combatants left and right, and Hank Pym being portrayed as a serial domestic abuser. And those are some of the less controversial changes. The line was ultimately cancelled in 2015, but helped introduce several elements that would serve as a foundation for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In the Ultimate Comics, Bruce Banner's research in the gamma radiation is funded by S.H.I.E.L.D. 
in an attempt to create a suitable replacement for the lost super soldier serum. This is the case in the 2008 film The Incredible Hulk, and carries on into the MCU. A scene from that film, where Bruce is dropped from a helicopter in order to trigger his transformation into the Hulk, is also directly lifted from the Ultimate Comics. In the main Marvel Universe, the Avengers operate out of Avengers Mansion, but in the Ultimate Universe, their headquarters is a Triskelion based on Little Island. This same building is featured in the MCU, albeit in Washington, until its destruction in Captain America, the Winter Soldier, after which the Avengers operate from the newly built Avengers compound. But there are also many aesthetics lifted from the Ultimate Universe. Earth 616 characters adorned lavish and ornate costumes that, while highly recognizable, might not always have been very functional. They also might not have transferred well to film. This was touched upon in Captain America the First Avenger, where we see Steve Rogers touring in a costume that's much more similar to his comic book look. It doesn't look quite as impressive or intimidating as the costume he eventually adopts for field duty. So instead, the MCU mostly featured the Kevlar and combat boost approach, especially when it came to shield operatives. This became a trend in the franchise where many characters are dressed in either their ultimate costumes or some variation thereof. And to be honest, it was for the best. Characters like Patroc, who even in the comics look ridiculous, now feature a design that established them as a credible threat. The first time I saw Winter Soldier, I was very impressed by Batroc's redesign and knew this movie was going to blow me away. While the tone of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is not as cynical as Wildstorm, there's still some distrust amongst our heroes. Nick Fury, like the typical secret agent man he is, doesn't share all of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s data when recruiting the Avengers, something Tony Stark himself is skeptical of, leading him to secretly dig up intel through S.H.I.E.L.D.'s files. Even Captain America is forced to keep the circumstances surrounding the murder of Tony's parents from his friend. While in the Golden and Silver Age of comics, many heroes were given full cooperation from lawmakers, our MCU heroes are routinely confronted by government officials who seek to have more of a say in their activities. Captain America has to face the grim reality that he woke up in a less trusting world, where there's very little room for his optimism, and the methods he considers questionable are now the new norm. This reaches a peak with the ratification of the Sokovia Accords, where the heroes are instructed to either work under a UN committee or cease their activities entirely. And so, there are many ways in which the Authority helped build what would become the Marvel Cinematic Universe. While I believe the 616 versions of Marvel's character pack enough of a punch to carry a film universe, the changes made were necessary to make them more appealing to a wider audience. Now that these characters have become household names, filmmakers are free to explore more classic approaches. As for the tone of the MCU, Many established filmmakers have accused the franchise of being of poor quality, arguing that all the MCU movies are more or less the same with no stakes involved. Kevin Feige, head of Marvel Studios, has fired back at these comments, stating that Marvel doesn't make superhero movies, they make other genre movies with a superhero angle, such as Ant-Man being a heist film, Winter Soldier a political thriller, and Black Panther, a film that's more about culture and identity than it is about punching a supervillain in the face. The Authority is a series that deserves respect, and I'm happy that with a feature film coming out, the entire world will get to know these characters and they'll earn that respect in an entirely different medium. They may have helped inspire the MCU, but there's absolutely no risk of them being accused of copying that franchise. Trust me. They've got too many unique elements to them for that to ever happen, and I look forward to when DC and James Gunn share some of these elements on the big screen.